Perhaps the most famous speech ever, and it took two minutes. John, we're going to be talking about the Gettysburg Address today, and you're a foremost authority on all things Abraham Lincoln. So for starters, just give me a little background on the Gettysburg Address. The library has uh, two copies of the Gettysburg Address. The major one is the Nicolay copy, which is the reading copy, the one Lincoln took from his coat pocket, unfolded, and read from. Lincoln was an afterthought, almost incidental. Uh, Edward Everett was the one invited to be the main speaker. Lincoln was only asked to give a few incidental remarks at the dedication. He was a sub-figure who overshadowed it all. And Everett actually spoke for two hours? He did. And what can we presume that this took a matter of minutes? Two minutes. And Everett acknowledged that. He had done more in the two minutes than he himself had done in two hours. He had his thoughts together and he had drafted something, but he told a friend that he wasn't quite through. How many words? More <laughs> Some say 273, depends on which draft you're uh, addressing. Okay. It's remarkable. The words still ring. Uh, it has you know, always been in the hearts of the American people. Now, how could I tell the difference between this and the original? The one thing you cannot see in the facsimile copy of the Gettysburg Address are the folds that Lincoln made so he could put it in his coat pocket. On the original, those creases are apparent. And that is one of the major points in identifying it as the reading copy. This is an example of an early facsimile. This is the most popular, and this is what all school children memorized. It was written by specific request, the paper supplied, the actual margins dictated, a title requested, the signature and date, so it's more mechanical than And it, it was written by Abraham Lincoln. It was. Except this physical one is not an authentic that's example of that. Is it's that correct? It's a facsimile. And so this physical piece of paper is how old? Probably 130 years. Well, that's kind of special in and of itself, is it not? It's worthless. <laughs> it's worthless. <laughs> there are too many. So the Gettysburg Address had already become something so celebrated that Lincoln was actually himself writing out additional copies of it? It was by request. In other words, specifically uh, people wanting to take care of the widows and the wounded. He actually had to assemble newspaper copies because he couldn't exactly produce what he had said. Because if you can see from this, it doesn't flow from page one to page two. Uh, the words under God are not in this. There's something great about the idea that uh, Abraham Lincoln had to look in the newspaper to see how Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address ran he so that Abraham Lincoln could then write it out again. He had lived. He had lived. <laughs> Dr. John Sellers, Historical Specialist, Library of Congress.